Ladies and mostly gentlemen, today we're going to talk about the new 3D backpacks, the kind of cloak things that were originally introduced in Battle for Azeroth, I believe, but have now made quite the appearance in Shadowlands. So in this video, we're going to talk about where to get all of the available ones right now. And there is a ton of them. But before we get into that, guys, just want to thank the sponsor of this video, and that is my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash MrGM. If you want to check me out streaming Shadowlands every single day, I'm over on twitch.tv slash MrGM. Right, so the 3D backpacks. Blizzard really really went pretty nuts with this. I remember they originally announced it at BlizzCon with the expansion announcement, and yeah, they went absolutely crazy. And there is a ton. I believe there is 12 for each Covenant, and then there is some that are actually for all Covenants as well. So we're going to cover all of those. This video is probably going to be split into different sections for the Covenants, so, you know, if you have a character for all the Covenants, you can check it out. Uh, but if you are looking for a specific Covenant, I will leave some timestamps in the description below. So, we have a lot to get through, so let's just jump straight in with it with some of the backpacks that are available for all Covenants and all characters. So the first one we're going to take a look at is the Grungy Containment Pack. And this drops from Bubble Blood in Maldraxxus. He's located in this area here. He is a bit of a tough cookie, so you probably won't be able to solo him. You might be able to solo him on something like, I don't know, like a Marksman Hunter or something like that. But it's always worth getting a group for this guy. You can farm this daily as well, and there are always groups going on the Dungeon Finder. So if you just head over to that area, type in Bubble Blood on the Dungeon Finder, and there's more than likely going to be a group going. So yeah, you can farm that daily, as I said. I've yet to have it drop, but it is a great looking backpack and available for all Covenants. The other three backpack available for all Covenants is the Pristine Containment Pack. Now this looks exactly the same, just in a silver color. Uh, still looks really, really great. And uh, this is actually obtained through a quest. Now to start this quest, you need to kill the Oily Invertebrate. Now this is down in the Plague Watch where you add the slimes to the pool here. You need 10 of each of the slimes to go up there to equal to 30. The Oily Invertebrate will spawn. It's not 100% drop rate, so you do need to kind of farm that. You can farm that daily as well. Uh, and that will give you eventually the Recovered Containment Pack. Now this starts a quest called Filling the Tanks, which sends you all around uh, the Shadowlands, I believe, uh, killing random things to uh, obtain the pack. And it's not too difficult to do. I've yet to have it drop, as I said, but this is something that you can farm daily and uh, you will obtain the pristine containment pack from it. So yeah, unfortunately, there is only two 3D cloaks that are available to everyone. So now we're going to go into the Covenant-specific stuff, and we're going to start with the Necrolords. So for each of the Covenants, there is always three different designs. So we're going to take a look at it at a design at a time. Each design has four different colors which are available. Now, the first design of Backpack we're going to take a look at are Fetishes and Crystals, I believe what they call them uh, in the game. So the first one we're going to take a look at is the Death's Fetish. Now, this is simply just sold by Narcorn. Towson acquires a exalted reputation with the Undying Army, which is the reputation of Maldraxxus, and it is 500 gold. So once you get exalted and you're in the Necrolords, you can purchase this for 500 gold. The next one is the Tomalin Seasoning Crystal. This is kind of the green design for it. Uh, this is purchased from Mama Tomalin after you've rebuilt them via the Abomination Stitching, which is the kind of weekly event for the Necrolords. So once you've built them, you can actually purchase this item from them. Not too sure of the pricing. I would imagine it's probably for Anima. I would imagine like maybe like 2k Anima or something like that. Or it could be gold, but more than likely with a lot of these things, it is a lot of anima. The next one is the Phylactery of the Dead Conifer. This is a purple design that looks really cool. Uh, this simply just drops from the Necrotic Anomaly in the top right-hand corner of Maldraxxus. Uh, pretty low drop rate. I have been farming this. This is farmable daily as well. Uh, but yeah, once you kill him, you have a chance of having the Phylactery of the Dead Conifer dropping for you if you are in the Necrolords. And the final crystal design is the Beckoner's Shadowy Crystal. This drops from Navaska the Summoner, who is over by the Sea at the Primus, just in front of it, and uh, he is only actually up when the World Quest Deadly Reminder is up as well. So once that World Quest is up, go and kill this big Lich. You get a chance of getting the Beckoner's Shadowy Crystal, so if you want to get that, guys, just make sure that World Quest is up, kill the Rare Spawn, and yeah, there's a chance of that. And, and obviously you can just farm that every time that the World Quest is up. So the next backpack design for the Necrolords is the Osteo Wings. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, so apologies if I am not, but yeah, that's just what we're going to call them. So the first one we're going to take a look at is the Barbarous Osteo Wings. This is purchased once again from Nalcorn Towson, and it requires an exalted reputation with the Undying Army, and this is purchasable for 500 gold. So once you get exalted with the Undying Army as an Necrolord, you do actually get two of these 3D backpacks, which is actually pretty great. The next item is the Regrown Osteo Wings. Now this is pretty interesting because this is actually one that we do not know where it comes from. This is listed as a 
quest reward, but yeah, as of yet, as of the recording of this video, we do not know the location of the regrown osteo wings. So if you have any information on that, guys, do let me know in the comment section below. But yeah, the regrown osteo wings, a bit of a mystery. Uh, the next one is the osteo wings of the Necrolords, and this is actually purchasable from Suzette at Renown34, and it costs 3,500 anima and 40 grateful offerings. So, so once you reach Renown34, you can speak to that vendor and you'll be able to purchase the osteo wings of the Necrolords. And the final one is the trophy of the Reborn Bone Lord. Uh, this drops from Zargos the Reborn in Maldraxxus, just over here. And uh, to spawn him, you essentially just need to get the Anti Matter Orb. Uh, this actually comes from a quest but once you finish that quest you can get it again and you just use it on this pile of bones here and it spawns him it seems to be a fairly decent drop rate i did get this drop on my necrolord character so yeah all you gotta do is head over there kill zargos the reborn he's pretty easy you can solo him if you really want to and uh, that is farmable daily as well and the final design for the necrolords is the standards these kind of look like a middle finger i really don't like the design of these honestly uh, but some people do and uh, that's okay so yeah as mentioned before there are four to choose from and let's take a look at some of them. So the first one is the Blade Sworn Battle Standard. Now this is obtained through a quest called the Golden Dawn. Uh, this is actually during the Necrolord campaign. So if you are a Necrolord, you're just passively going to get this while doing the campaign. The next one is the Standard of the Necrolords. This is available at Renown level 6 from Su Zete uh, and it costs 3,500 anima. So once you get to Renown 6, this will be available from the Renown vendor. The next Standard is called the Standard of the Blackhound Warband. Now this is actually looted from the Blackhound Cache. Now to obtain the Blackhound Cache, I believe you need to get one of the abominations called Visekus, I think his name is or something like that. Send him over to this location here. And I'm pretty sure you just knock down the gate and loot the Blackhound Cache. It's not 100% drop rate, but it is obviously a chance every time you do loot it. So if you want to obtain the standard of the Blackhound's Warband, uh, that is what you have to do. And finally, you have the standard of the Death's Chosen. Now, once again, this is actually unknown. We do not know the location of this green standard. Now, the Appearance tab does list it as a quest reward once again. So, yeah, it's a bit of a mystery. If you do know anything about the standard of the Death's Chosen, do let me know down below. But, yeah, that's all the ones for the Necrolord. So, jumping into the next Covenant now, we're going to take a look at the Venthyr backpacks. And some of these are really, really awesome. So, let's take a look at the first design, which is the Mantle of the Burnished Blades. This is a really cool design. It's got these kind of blades sticking out. Out the back there. The physics on a lot of these backpacks is nuts and this one included is uh, pretty crazy. So the first one as I mentioned is the Mantle of the Burnished Blades and this actually drops from the Tier 3 Blood Mirrors which I believe is the Travel Network. Now a lot of stuff comes from this. I don't know too much about the Travel Network. Unfortunately I'm only at rank 2 on my vent here but as far as I'm aware I believe there's some like chests everywhere. Uh, so once you get to that Tier 3 you do actually get a chance at looting a ton of this stuff and the Mantle of the Burnished Blades is one of the items that you will get uh, eventually through looting these caches. The next mantle is the Mantle of the Court Blades. This is just simply purchased from Temel at the Spire of the Unseen Guests for uh, 1,750 anima, and you have to be exalted with the Ember Court to purchase this item right here. So yeah, you've got to be doing that weekly event, the Ember Court, and once you get exalted, you can purchase the Mantle of the Court Blades. The next one is the Mantle of the Forge Master's Dark Blades. This is a really cool looking one. I love this coloration. Uh, this drops from Forge Master Maladav. Uh, he's actually a rare and you're going to need your Anima Conductor channeling to Dominance Keep to have this rare spawn. Uh, not too sure of the drop rate here. I think you do need to upgrade your Anima Conductor to get that choice. But yeah, once you have that and you can kill the Forge Master, he has a chance of dropping a 3D back, which is really, really cool. And the final mantle is the Mantle of the Crimson Blade. This is purchasable from the Renown vendor at Renown34 and will cost you 3,500 Anima. The next design of these 3D backs are the Sin Stones. They look so cool and they literally have a mind of their own. So these are definitely ones worth getting. That chain bounces around, that Sin Stone bounces around when you're jumping. I love it. I and this is actually one that I do use as well. So there are four of these designs to choose from. The first one being the Burnished Sinstone Chain. This is obtained through the Tier 3 Blood Mirror system. Uh, once again, not too versed on that, but once you do get your Blood Mirrors to Tier 3, there is a chance of obtaining the Burnished Sinstone Chain. The next one is the Glittering Gold Sinstone Chain. This is purchasable from M Mistress Myella. Uh, it requires Revered with the Court of the Harvesters. So once you get Revered with the Court of the Harvesters and your event there, you can purchase the Glittering Gold Sinstone Chain. Uh, the next one is pretty easy to get. This is Kel's Dark Sinstone Chain. This is actually obtainable through the Covenant campaign. So passively, you're going to obtain this one. Pretty great looking. As I said before, I do actually use this one on my Venthyr character. And uh, yeah, so just playing through the Venthyr campaign will get you this item from a quest reward. 
And the final Sinstone is called the Bronze Bound Sinstone. We don't actually know where this drops. It's listed as a world drop on the collection tab. We do not know where this drops right now. So if you do have any information about this, guys, do let me know down below. But yeah, it's a mystery. We, we do not know the location currently of the Bronze Bound Sinstone. And the final design for the Venthyr are the Crypt Keeper's Mantles. Uh, these have like little lanterns hanging off them and a big mean face in the middle. Uh, really great looking, once again has a mind of its own, just goes absolutely nuts when you have these and jumping around. So really cool looking design and uh, there are four of those to obtain. So the first one is the Ebony Crypt Keeper's Mantle. This is purchasable from Octavis Janeira, I think it is. And uh, it actually requires Revered with the Avowed Reputation. This is one of the reputations of Revendreth. Uh, as I said before, this is obviously Venthyr only. The next one is the Gleaming Crypt Keeper's Mantle. This is available through Renown. Once you get to Renown level 6, this will be available from the Renown vendor at a price of 3,500 anima. So if you want to get this design, you're going to need a lot of anima to purchase this from the vendor. The next design is Cassier's Crypt Mantle. This is actually obtained through the Ember Court. It's, uh, a commenter on Wowhead actually mentioned that they got the item from Crypt Keeper Cassier after completing the Ember Court scenario. And he said that it basically got his reputation up to a certain level and he obtained the Cassier. Cassia's Crypt Mantle. So that is one of those. And the final one is the Burnished Crypt Keeper's Mantle. Uh, once again, the name Burnished kind of gives it away that it will be obtainable through the Tier 3 Blood Mirror system. So yeah, each of these cloaks are obtainable through that Tier 3 Blood Mirror. Okay, so moving into the Kyrian now with the three designs. They have some fantastic looking cloaks, by the way. Definitely one of the best out of all the Covenants. And the first one we're going to take a look at are these kind of winged designs, and they are great. And the first item is the Discordant Wings of the Ascent. Uh, these are kind of the dark version of them. They look really, really neat. This is actually obtained through the Path of Ascension. This is one of the Kyrian's kind of weekly activities. You're going to need the achievement Master the Path to purchase this from Oluna for 1,750 anima. The next one is the Harmonious Wings of the Ascended. This will be unlocked at Renown 34 and will be purchasable from Adjudant Gallows for 3,500 anima and 40 of those Grateful Offerings. The next one are the Reverend Wings of the Ascended. This is actually rewarded from the Path of Ascension again. You have to beat some of the bosses in Humility difficulty. I'm not too sure how the Path of Ascension works, unfortunately, but if it is something you do understand, you do have to defeat things in Humility difficulty. And the final set of wings is called the Selfless Wings of the Ascended and is definitely the easiest set of wings to obtain and probably one of the best looking ones. Uh, this is simply just from the quest A New Age, which is a part of the Covenant campaign for the Kyrians. So just passively doing the Covenant campaign will obtain you some of these beautiful gold and white wings for your Kyrian character. The next design of 3D cloaks is this big halo. Uh, really, really cool, pretty big. Uh, back in beta, it was kind of bugged, but now it's working great. Uh, all of these use a very similar color palette for each four of them. So you can kind of mix and match quite nicely with some of the sets to make a really good looking transmog. So first one is the Halo of the Disordinate. This is obtainable once again from Orluna for 1,750 anima and requires the achievement, it's how you wear it, to purchase this item, which is from the Path of Ascension event. The next one is the Halo of the Harmonious. This is super easy to get. Uh, simply just get to Renown level six, go to Renown vendor and you can purchase this for 3,500 anima. Our next Halo is the Halo of the Reverend. Uh, this is obtainable similar to one of the set of the wings. This actually drops on the Path of Ascension Trial on Humility Difficulty. This is just another one of those items which is obtainable from doing that activity on that difficulty. And our final one is the Halo of Selfless. Once again, super easy to obtain. This is just simply rewarded from the Covenant campaign. So if you are a Kyrian battling through that campaign, you will obtain the Halo of the Selfless from the quest through Glass. So yeah, there you go. That is all of the Halos that are available for the Kyrian. The final design of Cloak is called a Sigil for the Kyrian. They're kind of cool looking, not my favorite. I don't think they're too flashy, but they are kind of neat and they do just kind of float there. And uh, yeah, so if you are interested in the Sigils, there are four of them to obtain once again. The first one being the Disordinate Sigil of the Archon. This is obtainable once again by completing the It's How You Wear It achievement and is purchasable from All Luna for 1,750 Anima. The next one is the Harmonious Sigil of the Archon. This is actually looted from a chest, so you can go and get this right now, 100% drop rate, super easy to get. All you have to do is loot the gift of Thenio's chest. To get this chest to open, you actually have to head over to this area right here, and uh, essentially you have to go on the different platforms and click the bells in a certain sequence. So the sequence is pretty easy, it's patience first, 
then knowledge, and then insight. Then once you've done them three, you need to head over to the platform with the incense of judgment. Not click the incense of judgment right there. You need to click the orb on the right hand side. That will send you to the actual incense of judgment. You click that, then the anima gateway, and then you can finally loot the chest, giving you the harmonious sigil of the archon. Uh, the next one is the reverent sigil of the archon. Uh, this once again is from the path of ascension, defeating it on humility difficulty. So the final one is the selfless sigil of the archon. Uh, once again, just like the other ones, this is just obtainable through the Covenant campaign. Super easy to get, nice design as well. So if you do do the Covenant campaign, you will be obtaining the selfless sigil of the Archon from that. And our final Covenant we are going to take a look at is the Night Fae. Uh, once again, they have three different designs with four different colors for each. So let's take a look at some of those. The first design we're going to take a look at is these backpacks, and there are four of those. So the first one is the Winter Woven Pack. This is purchasable from Spindle Nose, uh, which is the Court of the Night Quartermaster. All you have to do for that is get Honored Reputation. This is purchasable for 3,500 Anima and five Grateful Offerings. Uh, the next one is the Spirit Tenders Pack. This is actually lootable from the Queen's Conservatory Cash uh, in the Queen's Conservatory. So if you are doing that weekly event, uh, you will get a chance at the Spirit Tenders Pack at some point. The next one is the Fey Woven Pack. This is purchasable from the Wild Hunt Quartermaster at Revered, and it will cost you 3,500 anima to purchase the Fey Woven Pack. And the final one is the Knight Courtiers Pack. This is actually from the Renowned Quartermaster at Renown 34. It will cost you 3,500 anima once again, and 40 of those Grateful Offerings. So yeah, get out there, go and get Grateful Offerings, because it's going to take you a little bit of time to purchase it from the Renown Vendor. The next design are these bulbs. They're kind of cool. They've got the, these moths on them. They're different color moths as well, depending on which bulb you obtain. So it's kind of neat, and they do have uh, little cute animations on the back there. The first one we're going to take a look at is the Winter Woven Bulb. This will be available from Spindle Nose, the Court of the Night Quartermaster at Honored for 3,500 anima and five Grateful Offerings. The next bulb is the Spirit Tenders Bulb. This is actually obtainable through the Queen's Conservatory Cash once again. So yeah, doing that kind of weekly event will get you a chance at the Spirit Tenders Vendor's bulb at some point. Our next bulb is the Knight Courtier's bulb. This is purchasable from Elwyn, the renowned vendor, uh, at renowned level six, and will cost you 3,500 anima to purchase. Our final bulb is the Fey Woven Bulb. This is available from Cortinaris, the Maramuse. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, Quartermaster. And to buy the Fey Woven Bulb from him, you're going to need Honored Reputation, and that's going to cost you 3,500 anima. And our final design for the Night Fae are these branches right here, kind of like branchy wings. I think they look kind of cool, actually, and there are four designs available for you to get. The first one is the Winter Woven Branches. Now, this is obtainable from Master Clark Salon after participating in four different performances at the Starlight Camper Theater. So if you're not aware, the Starlight Camper Theater is a location in Ardenweald, which kind of plays back old bosses in a kind of play format, in a theater format. It's really funny, actually. But if you are a Night Fae and you do four of those, this will become available to purchase from Master Clerk Sarlorn. Uh, the next one is the Knight Courtier's Branches. This is once again purchased from Cortinaris, and you're going to need the Honored Reputation once again with the Mara Musi Mushroom Reputation, and that's going to cost you 3,500 anima once again. Our next set of branches is once again from the Queen's Conservatory, and it's a green item, so I presume that it's kind of common. I would imagine if you are a Knight fan, you are doing the Queen's Conservatory on a weekly basis, you've probably already got this, but this is the Spirit Tender's Branches, and uh, yeah, so if you are doing the Queen's Conservatory, uh, do let me know if this is fairly common. I would imagine it probably probably is at this point. And our final item is the Fey Woven Branches. This is obtainable through the Covenant campaign for the Night Fey. So if you are a Night Fey and you are working through the Covenant campaign, you will eventually obtain the Fey Woven Branches. So if you are looking to get one of these 3D backpacks, this is definitely going to be one of your easiest ones to obtain. Okay, so that is it, guys. Originally, this video was just going to go through the ones that were drop chance, but you know, I got kind of carried away. I wanted to go through every single one of them. So do let me know if it did help. Apologies on not getting too deep into some of the details. This video would be like too hours long otherwise uh, but yeah do let me know guys if you have any more information if you have any information about the missing ones or more information about ones that I might not have covered in as much detail uh, obviously drop a comment down below and let me know what you think of the video that'd be super super appreciated so before I go guys I'd like to give a massive shout out to my amazing patrons YouTube channel members and Twitch subs you guys are awesome and if you like to support the channel in any of those ways links are down below so leave a like on this video guys if you liked it and subscribe if you haven't I've also got a partner discord channel with over 3,000 members and as I mentioned at the beginning of the video I I am now streaming on twitch.tv slash mrgm. So if you want to check me out streaming every single day over on Twitch, I'm over on twitch.tv slash mrgm. And with that, guys, I'll see you next time.